Welcome back, deep divers. Today, we're strapping on our scuba gear and plunging into the future, but not the kind with flying cars. No, no flying cars this time. Nope. We're talking about the future of jobs. We've got reports, articles, even some expert opinions all lined up. A whole stack of them ready to unpack. Exactly. So get ready for some serious insights into what skills you'll need to thrive in the years to come. And honestly, which jobs might just go the way of the dinosaurs? Become relics of the past, you mean? Yeah, precisely. It's kind of wild because, I mean, we're not just gazing into a crystal ball here. Right. We're looking at hard data, trends, and all that to figure out where the job market's heading. Exactly. And one report, 15 jobs of the future, catchy title, predicts a huge boom in fields we're all hearing about, like big data analytics. Oh, yeah, big data. Climate change tech. Cybersecurity. Oh, of course, cybersecurity, always a hot topic. But here's the thing they also say traditional jobs, like teaching, are still expected to grow significantly. Really? I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, flip side, fields like, say, commercial and industrial design, those might see slower growth. Hmm, makes sense. Though they'll definitely evolve. Oh, for sure. Evolve in ways we probably can't even imagine right now. Absolutely. And that evolution, you know, it's largely driven by technology. It's like this common thread running through everything we looked at. Everywhere. The articles, reports, you know, from places like the World Economic Forum. Yeah, they always have their fingers on the pulse. Career platforms, the whole thing. And a whopping 75%, get this, of the fastest growing jobs they say will need STEM skills. STEM. So science, technology, engineering, and math. Right. That's the whole package. So... Knowing your way around a computer isn't just a bonus anymore. It's like yeah. entry level for the future job market. Exactly. And it's not even just about, you know, using the latest software. It's about the principles behind it all. Right. Having that ability to adapt as things change. Because, let's face it, technology is not slowing down. Not at all. It's accelerating, if anything. And speaking of rapid change, the World Economic Forum... They predict this massive shift by 2025. Big one. 85 million jobs gone. Displaced, yeah. Automation, artificial intelligence taking over. But on the other hand, 97 million new jobs created? Wow, so it's not all doom and gloom. No, but it is a seismic shift, yeah. you know? Really makes you think about what happens to those whose jobs are, well, displaced. Absolutely. Highlights the need for upskilling, reskilling, those days of learning one thing and sticking with it, gone. Yeah, coasting through your career is a thing of the past. Adaptability, lifelong learning, that's the name of the game now. So are you saying we all need to become like perpetual students, always hitting the books? Not necessarily students in the, you know, traditional sense, but that mindset, always learning, absolutely crucial. Always adding new tools to your belt, right? Exactly. Okay, so beyond the obvious tech giants, like... What specific jobs are we talking about here? Well, you know, the sources paint a really interesting picture. It's not all like coding wizards and stuff. Okay, good to know. I'm not a coding wizard. We're seeing a mix, really highly technical roles. Makes sense. But also some surprisingly human-centered ones. Ooh, okay, I'm all ears. Give me the rundown. All right, so on the tech side, you've got your AI and machine learning specialists, data scientists. It is everything these days. It really is. Then there's the cybersecurity experts, always in demand, and a whole range of software engineers. Oh yeah, software engineers, gotta have them. From full stack developers, you know, those who handle both ends. Front and back, the whole shebang. To more specialized fintech engineers, those focused on, well, the intersection of finance and technology. Fintech, that's a booming field for sure. Definitely is. And blockchain, that's another one with huge potential. Blockchain, yeah, I've heard that term thrown around. It's basically a secure way to record transactions. Okay, so lots of technical terms flying around. But what about those of us who aren't exactly fluent in code? Like, is there still a place for us in this tech-driven future? Oh, absolutely. That's the interesting thing. You see... As technology gets more sophisticated, the need for those uniquely human skills, it actually goes up. Oh, that's what I like to hear. Think about it. AI can write reports, create images, even write basic code now. It's getting pretty smart. But it can't replicate human creativity. The human touch. Critical thinking, the ability to connect with others on that emotional level. So, in a world increasingly run by algorithms, our human qualities become even more valuable. 
Precisely. And that's why rules like content creators. Really? I thought AI was going to take over all that writing and design stuff. Well, it can generate basic content. I guess so. But it doesn't have that depth, that understanding that comes from being human. So AI can write like a product description, but it can't capture the feeling of using it. Really. Right. Or tell a story that resonates with a human audience. One article even mentioned the movie Her. Even with super advanced AI, it's still not the same as human intelligence. Makes sense. Like, AI gives you the ingredients, but it takes a human to make it into something really engaging, something that has impact. Exactly. And that's just scratching the surface. You've got emerging fields like gene editing. Gene editing. Wow. The UK government thinks there'll be thousands of new jobs there by 2030. It's, it's incredible. Then you've got data brokers, virtual reality developers, even drone pilots. Drone pilots. Sounds futuristic. All pointing to a future that's both high-tech and deeply human, you know. It's mind-blowing. So it's not just about learning to code. It's about developing this whole new set of superpowers. Uh, Creativity, problem-solving, adaptability. Becoming the ultimate human upgrade. Exactly. But where do we even begin to prepare for all this? Well, that's where we shift gears a bit. Move from the specific jobs to those underlying skills that'll help you succeed in, well, any career. Okay, skills over specific jobs. And the good news is, a lot of these, you probably already have them, transferable skills. Oh, okay, so it's about recognizing what we already have and what honing those for the future. These all right, listeners, get your notepads ready. What are these magic skills that are going to future-proof our careers? Well, a bunch of sources, they all agree on the importance of what we call soft skills. Soft skills, like what? Like critical thinking, problem solving, that kind of stuff. Okay, so like analyzing information, connecting the dots. Exactly. In a world that's getting more complex, those skills are more valuable than ever. So we need to be less like robots and more like what, detectives? Uh-huh. Always questioning, analyzing, figuring things out. Exactly. And it goes beyond just, you know, intellect. Emotional intelligence, adaptability, resilience, those are all key. So being able to handle the ups and downs, roll with the punches. Yeah. The future of work is going to be dynamic, constantly changing. Those who can adapt, learn from setbacks, collaborate. Collaborate, yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Right. And one source, it was a video on the future of jobs. They put it really well. They said, the problem isn't the problem, it's your relationship to the problem. Whoa, that's deep. So it's not about avoiding challenges, it's about having the right mindset to face them. Exactly. But how do we actually develop these skills? Yeah, are we talking like years of intense training? That's the good news. The future of learning, it's just as dynamic as the future of work itself. We're moving away from that old idea of get a degree and you're set. So no more one and done with education. It's about lifelong learning, always upskilling, reskilling. Education doesn't end when you leave school. Okay, so we're not just talking about going back to college for another degree. Mm. What else is out there? Online certificates, those are great. You can get specific skills. It's flexible and often way cheaper than traditional education. Mm. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Technology is disrupting the job market, but it's also giving us these new ways to learn and adapt. Exactly. The future might seem uncertain, but it's also full of potential. By embracing that growth mindset, seeking out opportunities to learn. We can not only survive, but thrive. That's the goal. Okay, so we've got the skills we need, but how do we figure out which ones are right for each of us? Individually. That's where things get personal. That's what we'll dive into next time. Sounds like we've got a lot more to unpack. But that's what the deep dive is all about, right? Absolutely. We're here to help you navigate this whole future of work thing and empower you to make smart choices about your career path. So listeners, take a moment. Think about what we've discussed. What skills do you have that could transfer to those future jobs? What fields are you interested in? And most importantly, what can you do now to start exploring those interests? Keep those questions in mind. We'll be back to dive deeper into some practical strategies for navigating the future of work. Okay, so let's shift gears a bit and get into the nitty gritty. Nitty gritty time. Yeah, you know, we've talked about the big picture, all that tech stuff, the power of human skills. Right, the human element. Now let's bring it all back to, well, you. I'm ready, let's get personal. All right, first things first, take stock. Your strengths, skills, what are you naturally good at? Okay, strengths and skills. Got it. And what do you use in your daily life 
even if it's not, you know, on your official job title. So like being able to handle a million deadlines at once? Exactly. Or, I don't know, talking down a frustrated customer? Perfect examples. Those are what we call transferable skills. Transferable skills, okay. With communication, problem solving, time management, staying calm under pressure. Right, right. Those are useful in pretty much any job. Exactly, and they can be applied across different roles, industries, the whole thing. So it's not just about what's on my resume, it's about what recognizing those everyday skills I might not even think about. Exactly. And here's the key. Once you've spotted those skills, then you can start thinking about how they might fit into those future-proof careers. Okay, I like where this is going. So let's say I'm, I don't know, a master organizer, great communicator, and I can explain anything to anyone. Okay. I like Where do we go from there? Well, that's a great starting point. Those skills, they could lead you in so many directions. Okay, lay it on me. Could be a project manager in a tech startup where organization and communication, those are like essential. Fast paced, high pressure, gotta be organized. Exactly. Or maybe you'd be a fantastic teacher using those communication skills to, you know, prepare the next generation. Pass on the knowledge shape young minds. Exactly. I'm seeing the possibilities here. Instead of being stuck with one job title, I can look at a whole range of options. Based on what you're already good at. I like it. And don't forget about passion. What really excites you? What are you dying to learn more about? Passion, yeah. Gotta have that fire. That's a big clue to finding a career path that feels right. You know, less like work and more like, well, you. All right, listeners, time for some soul searching. What gets you going? Solving problems? creating something beautiful, making a difference in the world. All good options. They really are. So once you've got a handle on your interests, your strengths, then you can start looking into specific fields, potential career paths. And remember, no limitations here. No limitations, I like the sound of that. You might be surprised at the connections you can make between things that seem totally different. Okay, I'm intrigued. So let's say I'm fascinated by this whole future of jobs thing. My detective hat is on, ready to explore. Where do I start digging? One way is to think about the big challenges, the big opportunities facing the world right now. One article we read, it talked about the need for solutions in areas like climate change. Climate change, yeah, that's a big one. Mental health, the aging population. So even with all the tech disruption, there's still a need for people who want to make a difference. Huge need. And those fields, they're ripe for innovation. Take mental health, for example. Okay, mental health. We need more professionals, sure. But we also need people who can build those user-friendly apps. Oh, right. Like, to make it easier to access help. Exactly. Platforms, mm. AI-powered tools, the whole thing. Wow, so every challenge is also a chance to create something new. And make a real impact. And that's where your unique skills, your interests, they can really shine. I'm starting to see how this all connects. Well, like, remember that example you gave? Organized, great communicator, explains things well? Yeah, that was me. You could be the bridge between, say, the tech folks developing these mental health tools and the people who need them. That's a cool idea. Using my skills to not just build something, but to connect with people, make a real difference. And here's another important thing. That whole idea of education ending after you graduate, that's fading fast. Lifelong learning, right. We touched on that earlier. It's essential. One article, it was from a job platform in Singapore. It talked about how education and training, it's all becoming more flexible, more accessible. Okay, so lots of options out there. Tons. Online courses, boot camps, workshops, you name it. You can even learn from the pros directly. Directly how? Videos, articles, even podcasts. Wait, are you suggesting they listen to more podcasts? Maybe even this one. Well, I wouldn't say no to that, but the point is, there's a ton of resources out there, many of them free or super affordable. So it's about finding what works for you. Exactly. Whether it's a structured course or just going down a YouTube rabbit hole on something you're interested in. It's like you can create your own education, explore what really matters to you. And don't forget about your network. Talk to people in fields you're curious about. Go to events even virtual ones. Events, yeah, those can be great for insights, meeting people. Building those relationships, that's key. You can learn so much from others' experiences. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be shy, reach out, connect. People are often more willing to help than you think. And remember, even small steps can make a difference. Small steps. 
big impact. Exactly. Start with an article, a video, a free online course, anything that piques your interest. Dip your toes in the water, test the waters. And don't be afraid to experiment, try new things. You never know what you might discover about yourself. It's about embracing the unknown, the adventure of it all. That's the spirit. This has been really insightful. I feel less overwhelmed and more, well, excited about what's ahead. That's great to hear. You know, the future of work is changing, but it's full of opportunities for those who are willing to adapt, learn, and embrace the unknown. We've covered a lot in this deep dive. Big picture trends, the value of human skills, lifelong learning, how to explore career paths that really fit you. But there's one thing we haven't really talked about yet, the right mindset. Good point. We focused on the what and the how, but now it's time for the why. The beliefs, the attitudes that will help you not just survive, but thrive in this new world of work. Okay, this sounds interesting. What's the secret sauce to really excel in this changing landscape? Well, that's what we'll uncover in the final part of our deep dive. We'll talk about the power of a growth mindset, how to see failure as a learning opportunity, and strategies to navigate all those twists and turns that are bound to come up. Okay, so we've talked about the skills, how to find those hidden talents. Now let's get into the mindset, you know, the one that can really make or break you in this future of work. Yeah, we've covered the what and the how. Now it's time for the why, the beliefs and attitudes that can really make a difference. Okay, I'm all ears. What's the key to not just surviving, but really thriving in this ever-changing world of work? Well, it all comes down to something called a growth mindset. Growth mindset. Okay. It's the belief that your abilities they aren't fixed. They can be developed, you know, with effort and dedication. So instead of saying, I'm not a tech person, I should be saying, I'm not a tech person yet. Exactly. It's about embracing challenges, seeing setbacks as, well, opportunities to learn. Okay, so like learning from your mistakes. Yeah, and pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone. It's recognizing that the journey, the learning, it's just as important as the destination. So it's like learning to enjoy the struggle. In a way, yeah. It's about shifting your perspective, seeing those challenges not as roadblocks, but as stepping stones. Okay, I can see that. Mm -hmm. But let's be real. Failure can be scary. How do we get more comfortable with making mistakes? You know, one of the articles we looked at, the top seven skills, it had this great Einstein quote. He said, a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. So basically, Mistakes are proof that you're trying, experimenting, pushing yourself. Exactly. It's not about avoiding failure. It's about reframing it. When you hit a setback, don't dwell on the negative. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can I do better next time? Exactly. And that's where resilience comes in. That ability to bounce back, you know. Dust yourself off. Keep going. Exactly. Yeah. The future of work is going to be full of unexpected challenges. The people who can adapt, learn, and keep moving forward, they're the ones who'll thrive. So it's less about being perfect and more about persistence and a willingness to learn. Absolutely. Now, you said you've embraced the growth mindset. You're ready for challenges, committed to learning, right? Trying. So what are some practical things you can do to navigate this future of work? Yeah, what actions can I take? Well, staying informed is huge. The world's constantly changing. New tech, industries, even job titles popping up all the time. So keep up with the latest trends, right? Exactly. Read articles, listen to podcasts, attend webinars, you know, anything that keeps you in the loop. Be a future of work news jokey. Something like that, yeah. Be curious about what's happening in different fields, even if they seem totally unrelated to your work now. You never know where you'll find inspiration. Makes sense. And what about networking? Talking to people, going to events, all that. That's crucial. Build those relationships, not just in your field, but in areas you're interested in. Learn from others' experiences. Exactly. Don't be shy about reaching out to people you admire. Ask questions. They might surprise you with how helpful they are. It's like tapping into a network of, what, future work mentors. Exactly. And one last thing. Don't be afraid to experiment. Try new things. Take online courses. Volunteer. Push yourself. Get out of that comfort zone. You might discover hidden talents or find new paths you never even considered. Embrace the adventure, right? Absolutely. This has been fantastic. I feel so much more, I don't know, energized about the future now. That's great to hear. Remember, the future of work, it might be changing, but it's full of potential for those willing to adapt, learn, and embrace the unknown. 
So to wrap things up, listeners, we encourage you to check out the sources we mentioned, keep learning, keep exploring, and most importantly, take action. Remember, even small steps can lead to big changes. You have the power to shape your future in this new world of work. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. We'll be back next time with another fascinating topic to explore. Until then, keep learning, keep growing, and keep diving deep.